So here we are, rolling down the highway. <laughs> That's about enough of that. But we're going to uh, someplace special today. I always say someplace special, but uh, hopefully you'll find it special too. See you in a bit. Check out the disco house. Someone's checking out all them lights. That's bright. They yeah. Burn up real quick. Oh my God. And here's where we're at. We're taking a late night candle tour of the fort. You're in the light, Bert. <laughs> That's okay. So uh, we're going in the gift shop now, and uh, if it's not too busy, I'll film a little bit. Do we go into the, that or here? Yeah, you can here. Yeah. How could you miss it? That's the first thing I spotted when I walked through the door. <laughs> yeah, we have something similar to this one right here. Yeah, I seen the price on them. They're pricey. Yeah. We have a couple that look similar. That's a cool one. Wow. 
Wow. You doing all right? Oh, that's pretty. I guess that's like um, the grandma thing. Yeah. <laughs> I can't think of it. Really that's nice. terrible, isn't it? <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> oh. Got my little badge letting me in. Although I don't think anyone ever checks. That's where I'm probably going to end up standing in front of that bad boy. <laughs> Ooh. Follow the lights. They got a fire going over there.
So, uh, picture uh, what it is Europe wants in exchange for those models, mostly first. Not exclusively, but mostly first. Um, so, if you think, uh, have you heard of it? Yes, very much so. Well, and that Ellis evolved, has lived there near Kirtland. Okay. Uh -huh. That evolved from the Shawnee Indian city of the same name. Oh, it, in fact, these folks would have called that the Shawnee Indians' capital city. See, the Indians, in these, they didn't live in Chippies. Okay. They didn't, they didn't want portable housing. The Plains Indians needed portable housing because they're following Buffalo. Right. Right. The right. Indians in the East live in cities with names. Their land is forested, heavily forested. There are no wild horses on this side of the Mississippi. Yeah. Okay, now you think what difference yeah. that makes yeah. in the image yeah. of Native Americans living in this country. It is. Right. Big difference. Yeah, big difference. Yeah, uh, outside of their cities, these and, and villages, they have ways of these need portable housing because they're following up there. Okay. Right. Right. They need to East live in cities with names. Their land is forested, heavily forested. There were no wild horses on this side of the Mississippi. Wow. Yeah. Okay, now That's you pretty. What yeah. that makes yeah. in the image yeah. of Native Americans living in this country. Right. Very, big difference. Very much. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah, big yeah. difference. Uh, outside of their cities, these and ten villages, they have a big question. Feel free to ask it. Oh. oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. We've never had the tour of the tour, but well we did of the Joe House. Yeah. Now, that is why the Indians were attacking these settlers. Nice now, but in, in the middle of summer, eating for cooking, it's just as hot. Oh, I would imagine. Yes, it is just as hot. That's why I said I deserve to have this fire. I said, you have a warm spot. I said, yeah, I want to have a warm spot. So that's what the fighting is about. The reason that these little tiny. Yeah, with the door closed and stuff, do you stay pretty warm? Well, you would if you could close the doors, but of course, here. Right. No. Oh, I understand. I was just that one, and you could, they were their cabins were pretty much airtight. They were able to. It was kind of interesting. The chinking, um, you know, we have what what's actually called a perma chinking, so we don't have to worry about it. But their chinking would be done in the fall. The kids would actually gather the mud with horsehair, um, grass, whatever they could, and they would chink the cabins. And then, of course, over the winter with the rain and the snow and the weather, that would slowly melt. So in the summertime, the chinking starts to fall out. Well, that's good because that way the breezes from the summer will actually help to keep the cabin cool. Right. So then the next uh -huh. fall again, the kids' job would be to patch all the holes and everything. So um, it would be, it was pretty much airtight. Now, if they had the windows in their cabins, and not all of them would have had windows, they usually had, they took a hide and they would scrape it really almost translucent and, and use that as a window covering. Uh, so that they would have the light coming in, but yet you don't have the problems. And of course, they would have shutters on those for the winter time. It, it would stay a lot warmer if we could keep it. <laughs> we actually, sometimes we keep the windows open too, but we decided, well, it's dark. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to, because it does help with the light in here. Right. Um, and of course, their main source of light would have been the fireplace. Now, if you think about a typical cabin, if you notice the seam in the floor, right there. Yeah. Picture the wall being there, and then this being the typical size of a cabin. If you have that fireplace, that fireplace is going to be able to light that whole cabin up. So, yeah. And then you picture these big families living in these small cabins. The body heat itself would help keep you warm. Right. Huh. Look at that thing swinging over there, Terry. That poker. Crawl up in that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. 
Good thing swinging in there. That poker? Huh. It's crazy. Um, some of the recipes call for a little bit of sugar. Sure. About it, but then I can always add it. <laughs> 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 taste. You know, but, I mean, it's 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 interesting that they can really taste really good without a lot of sugar. I learned something new that I didn't know about the bee thing. Huh. Yeah. Huh. That's crazy. And next Friday, um, we're going to be doing a, a traditional Christmas dinner, a possible traditional Christmas dinner. We're going to have a duck, a pork loin, um, a pear tart, and a squash soup. It actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> um, I've actually done all of those at some point. So it's something that turns out really good. Squash soup is my favorite, I think. Which is really interesting because I'm not a big pumpkin squash person. Yeah. But it's really good. Do you do it with like sugar or what well, do you? No. Um, I, I didn't know if they had a lot of that. Actually, you cook your squash. Yeah. Cook your squash down, and then nutmeg. I can't remember what all the particular spices in it. They spice it up a little bit, and it just gives it a, a, a kind of a, a different type of taste, and a little bit of cream in it. Now, the, my favorite recipe, I've got three, four different recipes for squash. You actually, you fry sausage, put the sausage in it, too. Ah, that um, sounds so good. Squash and sausage soup, and it's really good. Huh, it sounds good. Now, one time... I, I kind of cheated a little bit, and I, I had a can of pumpkin at the house, and I wasn't paying attention because you can buy pumpkin with no spices in it, or you can buy pumpkin pie filling already done. Right. Well, this was actually a pumpkin pie filling, and I didn't realize it till I opened the can. Well, it was too late then. So we had it one time with this pumpkin pie filling, uh -huh. and it was very good. Wow. It, but it was a little bit sweet. It was a little bit sweeter, but they didn't they didn't use a lot of sugar because you had that's one of the things you had to buy. You, know, you couldn't make sugar out here. They, they would have had a little bit of maple syrup and um, possibly ran across a bee tree. But you got to realize that since honeybees are not native to North America, they didn't come here till after they discovered when they came here that the apple trees and fruit trees weren't producing like they were back in Europe, and they figured out it was because there was no honeybees to pollinate them, so they, they had to be imported. So those honeybees took them a while to get across the mountains, you know, and I don't know that I'd want to bring a hive of bees with me. <laughs> yeah, that might be, you know, like, carry that, that hive of bees. So eventually the swarms in the spring would go, and they would eventually get to the cross the mountains, and they would have bee trees out here. And then, of course, you could find a bee tree, and as long as you found the queen bee, you could actually bring them back and start a hive of bees that way. So that took a lot of time, so they probably didn't have a lot of honey but the maple syrup definitely yeah now if you had a really good year of hunting and were able to take your furs back to winchester and had enough to buy your gunpowder and land your soft essentials then you might have enough extra left over to get some sugar but when you're used to eating without sugar um, guess you wouldn't miss it we do I do have the um, the luxury here. Um, some of the recipes call for a little bit of sugar, and we can always add a little bit of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Taste, you know, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting that they can really taste really good without a lot of sugar. Huh. I learned something new, though. I didn't know about the bee thing. I'd always, I'd always took it for granted they were here. I <laughs> never thought about yeah, that one. They're not native to North America. Huh. Huh. It was kind of a problem when I first came here. Well, I hope it never becomes a problem again, but I, it looks sometimes like it's well, going to. You know, my grandfather, when I was growing up, had, and he had as many as 30 beehives, and uh, my cousin kind of helped take him over. There is a mite that has been killing bees, um, and it's just this little tiny mite that gives in the bees, and they, they are just now starting to... Um, the meat populations are starting to come back. A lot of people lost all their hives to them. Huh. So it's just a thing. In fact, I met my cousin. 
That, they, they, they the point is they have a bee inspector, and this bee inspector comes in. Well, he came in and inspected the bees that my grandfather had, and my cousin was operating. And about a week later, they started getting, they started dying. And what had happened was that bee inspector had been to another bunch of uh, aviary and brought those mites into my cousin. He said, this is wow. the best bunch of bees I've ever seen. And then within a couple of weeks, they were, they were the same problem. So, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Huh. It's, uh, huh. But they're starting to come back. I've seen more honeybees this year than I have in the past year. So. <laughs> Yeah, I see a lot of the bumblebees and the yellow jackets. Yeah, I've seen a lot of them. They help a little bit with the pollination, but not nearly like the, the honeybees do. Right. Yeah. Wow. Well, still doing good? That kind of a attitude. So they did decorate, but with holly and ivy. Mint. What else does what stays green in our neighborhood? Yeah. Okay. Some decorate with that, but notice no Whoa. Hi. Hi. Is it, is this where I seen them fires at? No. I said I thought that might have been where I seen these fires going, but no. I love this trunk. <laughs> that trunk. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'm not sure how much of this is going to show up, but it's kind of neat. The daughter-in-law at this house is Oh, they're back here. Is this, were we in here? Huh? Did we come through here? No, not here. I don't know if we did or not. Hi, guys. Howdy. We do ask you don't, All right. Hi. We do ask you don't use your phone flashlights when you're walking around here, because it doesn't make us really blind when you leave. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Have you guys been next door quite yet? Over there? Yeah. Uh, kind okay. of, they yeah. talked a little bit about it, uh, if you were over there for that. Um, just to go over some basics. Really, when it came to Christmas at this point in time, uh, nobody was really celebrating, especially not like we do today. If you went up north to New England, uh, most of the Puritan groups would not have been celebrating Christmas at all. Uh, this day was just like any other. They would either spend the day at home if they didn't have work, or at work if they did have work. And if we went down to the southern part of the states here, colonies at the time, where the Roman Catholics were, you'd have seen a lot more kind of celebrations, but not like we do. There would have been no gift giving or anything like that. Uh, they'd have been going to church for the most part. The churches would be decorated, uh, that they would be kind of celebrated as a holy day, but they weren't doing anything like we do. Now, when you come out here to the frontier, it was entirely different. Uh, they didn't really care on what religious group frowned upon what. Now, they were religious here, but they were also coming into the worst season of the year, which was winter. They couldn't farm at this point. They were relying on the food they had grown over the years and anything they could possibly hunt during these few months All right, to keep going. So Christmas was an opportunity for all the families in the area to get together. Uh, their neighbors, even though the neighbors would have been miles away, uh, they'd have all came down here, played some games, hung out, drank a little bit. Uh, really kind of a cheerful way to start this horrible time of the year for them. <laughs> And that's really what it was. Uh, it was just kind of a time to get together, you know, and spend some company before you went through the next few months. And hopefully in the springtime, you ran into everybody again. 
Um, before everything got bad, Christmas was a chance for them to celebrate. Now they did, of course, keep it religious as well. Uh, the frequency would have been Quakers, actually. Uh, so they did, you know, know that these days were holy, and many groups, you know, did respect that. Um, but it was very varied across these colonies. Uh, you know, if you went north back into where I mentioned the Puritans, going back a few hundred years, actually just about a hundred, uh, in Massachusetts it was illegal to celebrate Christmas. All right, as time went on, they did change that law, um, but it wasn't something people were celebrating like we do today. And when they did celebrate it, it was much more adult-oriented. Uh, today, of course, we're much more kid-oriented, giving gifts, spending time with you know, family. For them, it was very different depending on which religious group you were in and where you lived at the time. And if you have any questions related to Christmas, the fort in general, or anything, feel free to ask or walk around here, uh, look at everything. We do have a couple fire pits out there lit. You're welcome to go get warm by. It is nice and chilly today. <laughs> uh, definitely feel free to hang out and ask anything you want to. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> um, I can't see. Yeah, you don't want to do that one. Oh. Yeah, it does. They built a couple fires out here. I just want to go home and build one. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish you could see by the firelight, there was one of the gates to get out. And that's the wall. Boy, you can barely see. And that was a stable place for the animals. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And there's the gate to the fort. And I'm six one and his center of this wreath is eye level. And Albert keeps running off with the light. I keep forgetting you can't see. <laughs> Let's go toward the house, wherever that's at, this way. I need to talk. Mm -hmm. I went into that place where that guy was telling us that story. When I first went in there, that, that other guy was sitting on his lap and they were kissing and shit. Oh, really? Yes, they were. Mm -hmm. I turned around and walked right back out. I was like, oh shit. I was looking for you. I was like, oh my God. Thank you. 
probably supposed to have. We came back from the port. We came in the wrong way. <laughs> I'm a rebel. I'm going this way. <laughs> Some, you know, I wanted to go to Gettysburg and all that. So, okay. Come on in, guys. All right. We're, 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 Katie's in there talking about the house and everything. You guys have now traveled back in 1859. This is when Joe finally uh, was able to get and move into his house and everything with his first wife. Uh, the fort wouldn't have been here at this time. The fort would have actually been, you know, taken apart and disassembled, and uh, you wouldn't have seen it. Now, we know that Joe plowed against, or at least the story we have is Joe plowed against, the, he thinks, against the outer stockade post here. So we know the fort sat here somewhere, but we don't know exactly where. So this is one of five homes that were built. This is only two that are still remaining. This one here that's been restored to the original home and the one at Montana Mines that they, uh, that they uh, uh, covered in siding and it's up on top of the hill here. But there was a total of five and there's only one brick mold. Have you been to the visitor center yet upstairs? Yes. Well, there's only one brick mold left after the 14 or 15 brick molds that they had. And that was one of the brick molds that helped form the brick to build this house. Huh. Yeah, walk on in there. Katie's in there. She'll answer any questions for you. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Don't let, don't let these two people in. Right yeah, they, 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 don't, don't let these people in. <laughs> oh, is this the way you go in? Yeah, now, she's in there. If you want to listen to her talk in there, go ahead. But you can start in here if you'd like. Oh, okay. He abandoned us to the Indians. Oh, he's, he's good about that. I like that too. Yeah. I had that. Had to rescue from Rich Mountain. He, 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 he killed over before I did, and I killed over shortly after he did. That's all guys. I think it's the Lord. Oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Because right, I wondered if I had it upstairs. Mm -hmm. and look, they got a casserole dish under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard stories of people buying those at antique stores and using uh, them for uh, such things. And it's like, oh. That's like your mm -hmm. vacation where he thought it was to shave with. Uh -huh. you know, brush your teeth. Oh, brush your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a Civil War thing, a sutler had. This for sale, and these women were all get. Oh, look, we'll get that for the for the potato casserole and all that. I could just imagine <laughs> uh -huh. that, and then Grandpa comes in to late or something. He goes, "Oh my god!" Yeah. <laughs> but I, I did inform him. I said, oh, "Ladies, <laughs> that's that's poor." Yeah. <laughs> Shaking yeah. Yeah. Well, my dad was bundled up like you would play. No, we're, we're, no, 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 it's yeah, it's our turn. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, I didn't see that. What's that? You wanna? The Halloween oh, camp. It's pretty. I have lamps at the house exactly the like that. Back and uh, but we are lucky enough to have just a few pieces that did belong to the family. I mentioned this pretty, one here. Thank you. Uh, you uh, production. I was going to say, um, still, yeah, those are things that we've been able to Angel faces 180 mm -hmm. years ago. Actually, you'd be surprised at how uh, many ornaments actually do survive from the 1850s. Uh, glass ornaments, even, have survived from the 1850s pretty, in pretty impeccable condition. Because we'll take care of them and put yeah. them yeah. away. Uh, now that tree is actually a reproduction of the first type of artificial Christmas tree. Oh, is that right? Uh, it's called a feather tree because those are feathers that are making up the little pine needles there. <laughs> it's pretty neat. It's like the first fake Christmas tree. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> It's your, your display tonight is those two buildings and then this house, is that everything? Uh, this house and then, yeah, what's inside the fort okay. is, is all that we've got. Uh, yep. Thank you. Uh, unless you've been up in, uh, we've also got the gallery and the visitor center open as well. Mm -hmm. So that has a lot of neat artifacts, especially relating to this house. There's a picture of the man who built this house, Job, and his first wife, Louisa. We saw that. So, I'm always a little proud of those pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. You're very welcome. Thank you for coming out tonight and braving the cold. We should feel not quite so alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And those are feathers. Are they? Huh. Huh. Wow. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. I'm just... Uh, just lighten, huh? Yeah, lighten the way. So you can see where you're going. Uh, okay. <laughs> you can you see where you're going? Yeah, I can. <laughs> call it camera. as a kid before they fixed this up. Yeah. Playing with an apple press on this porch. Huh. It was way before this was fixed. I started showing it. Is it anything like you thought it might be? Um. Kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of. I thought we'd get a tour. Well, they're talking to us. It's kind of a sort of. Yeah, well, I thought they were supposed to. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No, not quite what I was expecting. So what do you want to do now? Oh. <laughs> Let's 
see if they find more music. Oh. I, just a little bit there at the end. Yeah, I gotta go back and get my thing. Are you ready? I guess. I might have to go buy me a piney apple. Well, let me start by going. Okay, we got something at the fort today, and they wrapped it in this box. Let me show you what it is, if I can get it out of here. I got a box of peanuts! <laughs> no, fake out. Oh, hold on. I'll have to show you after I get it out. And this is what we got. This cool. Well, I bought some taffy too. <laughs> but this cool bell. I collect blue glass and... Uh, I saw this last summer. They had these. I believe if it's the same ones, they make them in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia. That's what they said last time. And they send them, they order them from Williamsburg. Which in itself is a... Uh, Colonial Reproduction Village. So this is a... Yeah, it's a Colonial Reproductive... Uh, reproductive... Reproduction of a... Uh, well, I guess you would use these to cover over foods or... Maybe something you didn't want to get dusty. I don't know. But I love the, I love blue glass, and I just think that's so pretty. Okay, I want to show you all. <laughs>